Hey guys, Silver Shady here, and uh, welcome back to another episode of Poke Monday. Um, it's yeah, this one's been a long time coming. Um, anyone who saw the update video, you know why this is so delayed. Um, between Burning Shadows just being a meh set at best, uh, alongside everything else, I just really have been having a hard time getting this deck put together. Um, regardless, though, uh, we're gonna start off. Kind of strong here. I know I missed three weeks of Poke Monday, so as a thank you for your patience, I got three Guardians Rising code cards for you. Okay. So um, again, thank you for your patience on all on this video. Uh, I know it's been a long time coming. Uh, also, I wanted to mention uh, one other thing. Um, uh, as just in general, a thank you for everything you guys have done. I have managed to get a hold of three code cards uh, that I'm actually really excited to give away to you guys. Uh, I have three Plasma Freeze codes. Um, uh, each one I'm going to give away... Uh, in a different way. Uh, one of them I'm going to give away um, probably on uh, the channel itself. One I'm going to be giving going to be giving away on Twitter, and the last one I'll be giving away on the Facebook page that we'll have linked in the description below. All right. So as far as the one that we're going to be giving away on the channel, um, when this video hits 20 likes. Uh, that following Poke Monday, I will uh, reveal this code. First come, first serve for that one. Uh, as for the one on Twitter, I will be putting out a tweet with a picture of the actual code card. Uh, when that tweet hits 20 retweets, uh, that code will be revealed on Twitter. And then lastly, there will be a question on our Facebook page. It will be the first, first post on the Facebook page. Um, well, first actual post on the Facebook page. Um, again, showing a picture of the code. Uh, you answer the question correctly, I'll pick a random person out of it, and uh, I'll send them the code. So, yeah, three Plasma Freeze codes up for grabs. Uh, good luck. All right, now, uh, now that we've gotten all that sappy crap out of the way, let's get to the actual freaking deck. Uh, today we're going to be going over um, a Darkrai EX, Darkrai GX deck for the next standard format. So format of 2017-2018 rotation, which we have gotten confirmation on, is now Breakthrough on up and XY Promo 67 on up. So Stardust Urachi will be staying in format, which is something to note. Alright, so we're going to start off with three copies of Darkrai EX. Uh, Breakpoint. This guy's been in standard format for ever. Um, he's pretty well ingrained in the format at this point. If you don't know what he does, um, yeah. Long story short, this deck will be able to take advantage of both of his main attacks. Uh, so. We also play three copies of the new Darkrai GX. Um, really nice as this gives, as Dark Red GX gives this deck a GX attacker, which it, similar to Volcanian, did not really have access to. Uh, so to give you a quick rundown on Dark Rye, uh, 180 HP Dark type, basic, naturally, uh, has a two star retreat cost, pretty standard for Dark Rye's, uh, weakness to fighting, resistance to psychic, no, no big shockers there. Uh, its ability, Resurrection. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in your discard pile, you may put this Pokemon onto your bench. Then attach a Dark Energy card uh, from your discard pile to this Pokemon. Um, naturally, this is extremely powerful as you can Ultra Ball away a Dark Red GX and a Dark Energy, get your Dark Red EX onto the field, and then Resurrection that energy right back onto the field. So just powering up your Dark Pulse attack with your Dark Red EX. Uh, Dark Red GX also has its own attack, which actually does come in handy, and you will use occasionally. Dark Rift, 
as its primary attack for two dark energies and a colorless does 130 damage and it's not affected by resistance. Uh, this does play a pretty big uh, big role as Sylveon GX will still get hit for full damage, as will the new Gardevoir. So uh, two cards that I, I still expect to have a decent decent uh, showing in the format. Uh, and then it's GX attack. Um, it's GX attack, two dark and a colorless, dead end GX. Uh, if your opponent's active Pokemon is affected by a special condition, uh, that Pokemon is now knocked out. So, but yeah, nothing to you know muddy up the water. Simple. If it has a special condition, it's dead. Easy as that. Uh, now, naturally, we we'd like to be able to use that GX attack. You know, seems like a good idea to be able to do that. Uh, so we do run a two two Hypno line. Uh, Hypno was released in uh, Breakpoint alongside Dark Right EX. Uh, its ability, Goodnight Babies, once during your turn, before you attack, you may leave both active Pokemon asleep. Uh, now, naturally, um, this opens the door for your Dark Right EX to uh, use its Dark Head attack, which will deal 160 uh, base damage if your opponent's active Pokemon is asleep. And it also naturally leaves the door open for us to use Dark Right GX's GX attack knocking out your opponent's active Pokemon instantly. We also run two copies of Tapu Lele, as supporter searching is still, and probably will be even more important than ever before. Uh, and then for draw power, we run a 2-2 two, two Octillery line. Nothing too, too surprising there. Octillery, it's Abyssal Hand ability. Once during your turn, you may draw until you have five cards in your hand. That does it. Pokemon, we're going to move on to supporters next. We have four copies of Professor Sycamore. Play four copies of N. One copy of Lily. Two copies of Guzma. Uh, Guzma um, is a card that's coming out next set in Burning Shadows. Uh, it's a Lysander and a Switch in the exact same card. That's the easiest way to describe it. Either that, or you can also say it's an escape rope where you choose uh, which Pokemon your opponent brings out. So, just a really powerful card and something that definitely is taking the place of Lysander. Um, and it honestly would not surprise me if this card, in general, even in Expanded, takes over Lysander. Uh, me personally, I know I'm going to be using it. So, And then we also play one copy of Plumeria. Uh... This card is definitely cuttable. Uh, Plumeria, you get to discard two cards from your hand in order to play this card. Uh, and then you discard one energy attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon anywhere on the field. Um, it has synergy with Dark Red GX. Uh, in 9 times out of 10, though, I don't really use it as much. I originally ran two. I cut it down to one as I wasn't really too fond of it. Um, and again, this is definitely something you could cut out of the list for something you feel is more streamlined, but either way, uh, for our stadium of choice, we play three copies of Chaos Tower. Um, naturally, the side that's going to be facing you is the side that's important, as it doesn't really matter if your opponent can't be poisoned or confused. Um, but with this side facing you, uh, you cannot be affected by sleep or paralysis which naturally makes it so that Hypno only affects your opponent's active Pokemon. So. And that, that's, yeah, that's about all the explanation you need on, you need on that one. Uh, for our tools, we play three copies of Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, you could make the argument for Choice Band, but seeing as this is a basic deck that's going to be trying to compete with a whole bunch of Stage 2 decks, having that extra HP will definitely help. Onto our regular items, we still play four copies of Ultra Ball. Two copies of Field Blower, still just an insanely powerful card. Four copies of Max Elixir, um, just more energy acceleration on turn one. Uh, if you can pull it off, you can actually attach eight en energies on your first turn. Uh, that's assuming you can pull it off. 
It's not entirely out of the realm of possibility, but it's highly unlikely. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we'll play one copy of Professor's Letter, one copy of Energy Switch. Uh, Energy Switch is a bit of an interesting choice as um, initially I didn't have it in the list that this was initially another copy of Plumeria. Um, but in testing, I found that the energy switch actually was pretty crucial as you could charge up uh, a Dark Rite EX turn one just by your regular manual attachment and then using Dark Rite GX's resurrection ability and then energy switching that energy over. Uh, if you were to cut the Plumeria, I would recommend another copy of energy switch. Um, I'm still debating on how I like the split to go or if I even like this in the list. Uh, we also play one copy of Town Map. Uh, we are entering into a bit of a slower format, uh, what with Shaman versus Seeker leaving the format. Having Town Map, um, just in general, to know exactly what prize you're going to grab, when you're going to grab it, just as a nice tactical advantage. Uh, if you don't feel you need it, you can easily cut it. Me personally, I think it helps. But... And then to round it out, we have one copy of Switch. Uh, this is mostly to work in synergy with Guzma. Um, yeah. And then we lastly play one copy of Escape Rope. I still am choosing to play this. Uh, even with Guzma in format, I still think Escape Rope is going to be a strong play to have as just as a one of. Um, as Guzma, keep in mind, is your supporter for the turn. And if you have to play another supporter like a Lily or something like that, you need to get something else into the active spot or out of the active spot. Uh, escape rope is just a really good option to have. So, again, my own personal take on it. Uh, if you feel you don't need it, absolutely feel free to cut it. This is just to give you guys an idea of what we're probably going to be looking at for next format anyway. But um, and rounding out the list, we play eleven basic dark energies. Uh, enough to work with Max Elixir, enough to work with Darkrai GX, and enough for Darkrai EX, assuming you have all of them on the board, to swing for a total of 230 damage with a Fighting Fury Belt. Um, annoyingly enough, keep in mind that still is not going to be enough to knock out uh, things like Metagross and various other decks that are running rampant nowadays. Uh, you will also be 10 damage shy of a Decidueye, but... That's, that's the only downside to this. Uh, another card I could definitely see someone trying to run uh, with this deck in general is uh, Kukui. Um, just to make it so that those numbers don't matter as much. Personally, I still don't really feel it's absolutely necessary. Uh, we're still in mostly a two-hit format. There's only really a few decks out there that are really going to be one-shotting almost everything they see, so I'm not too worried about it, at least. But, either way, that's the deck for you guys. Again, thank you so much for your patience. I really do appreciate it. I know this deck has been a long time coming. Uh, I do have more Burning Shadows decks on the way. Um, I probably will not be covering every single GX in the set as... From at least initial glance, a good half of them are probably just a better, slightly better version of Komomo 000. So, yeah, probably not going to have a deck on those ones. Um, I can tell you there are going to be at least two more standard format decks coming out, and there will be two expanded decks, uh, expanded decks that I'll be covering for this set. But either way, here is your code card for this week. Uh, just another Guardians Rising code for you. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Again, uh, if you did like the video, leave a like. That way I can give away one of these codes. Again, these are extremely hard to find. Anyone who's been playing the TCG for a while knows that. Um, check out the Twitter, the Facebook, for chances to win all three of them, I guess. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.